projectors and uh, agendas and minutes in the middle. Show. Sure. Yeah. Is there an acting and steam manager? Yes, I am. He's now full fledged. Great. Good to see it. It's been a while. I'm excited when I saw the runs. You're in. When was that announced? Monday. That or you're like, oh god. Who's the kid? Wow. Okay. We just we got the press release out today. Contract ratified Monday. Congratulations. Wow. There's that guy going. Where's the board I'm on the I'm on it. All right. I'm working. 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 Uh, before we move into the agenda, I'd like to provide information to the public on how they may participate in the meeting. You can join us during the public comment period via teleconference at www.zoom.us. Meeting ID 895-2378-0703. Passcode is 020042. Uh, you can also call in your comments via Zoom, call via Zoom at 669-900-6833 where you'll be put on a brief hold until it's your turn to speak. Mr. Seal, would you like to do the roll call first? I know you're doing multitasking there, or I can no go along here. I can handle, handle a maximum of three things at once. So okay, let's, good. Let's try here. Uh, from the chamber, Jeremy Carlson, President. Uh, Brendan Cheney from the Planning Commission, President. Uh, Zach Chess, City Council Here. All right, and Chairperson Matt Wren. Here. And Chamber Member Steve Black. Here. Okay. Cool. I'll also note in attendance is our newly city manager in the Iron Eagle and Pleasant Hill Rec and Park uh, general manager Michelle Lacey. So thank you. And CEO, of course. All right. Okay, at this time I'd like to invite the public to address the Economic Development Committee on items on the agenda or within the committee's purview. Comments are limited to three minutes per speaker. Once again, you may contact us at Zoom at www.zoom.us. Meeting ID uh, 895-2376-0703. Passcode is 020042. You can also comment via phone at 669-900-6833. Uh, are there any callers, Zach? Oh, sorry, sorry, sorry. Just a couple seconds. I'm looking at you. Uh, any callers? <laughs> there are no members of the public wishing to speak at this time. Okay, no hands raised on Zoom. Correct. Okay. Well, then we will close public comment and move on to the next portion of the agenda. And that would be the approval of the May 8th meeting. Um, minutes have been provided. Any committee members have any changes um, or if not, we'll request a motion to adopt the May 8th minutes. Uh, my motion is present at this one. I'm not listed as a committee member who was present for roll call. Okay, so we'll make that amendment for you. Any other? Uh, last one, last one. My first one, everybody forgot. Oh, right. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we did that. <laughs> we'll we'll give you credit. Uh, you felt your presence <laughs> in person, just not on paper. Yeah, so we have a motion. Uh, from Jeremy with the motion with amendments. Is there a second? Sure, I'll second. I'll second it. Council Member Shuss. All in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Abstain. Abstain. Okay. So that wasn't okay. Fantastic. Minutes are carried forward. All right. Moving on to the next item of our agenda is an update on the website and social media technical assistance grant program. Take it away, Mr. Seal. Thank you, Chairperson Wren, members of the committee. Uh, I have a PowerPoint ready for you here. Okay. Uh, so as I normally do when we talk about either the PERCS program or the technical assistance program, because they are both funded out of the uh, ARPA program, I'll just give a little bit of background to get us all up to speed. So uh, in late 2021, the city council approved out of its $8.3 million total ARPA allocation for the city, 
uh, $500,000 specifically for programs to help uh, Pleasant Hill small businesses. Uh, so that's all ARPA money, so no uh, general funds uh, for this uh, business support initiative. All eligible costs must be committed by the end of next year. However, they don't actually need to be extended until the end of 2026. Uh, the two core uh, initiative programs that we will be uh, discussing today are the Pleasant Hill Perks Program and the Digital Assistance Grant Program. And so really there are two goals out of the committee meeting today. Uh, the first is to bring the committee and the public up to speed on uh, the progress of the two programs, where we're at, and then also uh, to make some budgetary decisions about how, how to allocate the $500,000 or a portion of it uh, towards these two programs going forward. Uh, also, as a refresher, I know the committee, for the most part, uh, Brendan, this may be new uh, a little bit for you, uh, just a little bit of a refresher on the Digital Assistance Grant Program. Uh, it's a, uh, a, a reimbursement grant program of up to $7,500. Uh, businesses in Pleasant Hill are eligible if they have a storefront, if they are either a retailer, a restaurant, or a personal care service business. And, you know, the target is really all businesses that meet that criteria in the city. Uh, but in particular, we really wanted to target those businesses that uh, know at some level that they need to make improvements to their website, they need to uh, enhance their online ordering functionality, uh, they need to engage with their social media accounts a little bit more and do some marketing that way, uh, but for whatever reason, don't have the wherewithal, uh, the funding, uh, or the time in some cases to do that. So. Uh, this is a tool, uh, not only because it provides funding to businesses to um, uh, get these services, but we're also uh, providing to the businesses that get the grant a list of seven pre-screened consultants so that the businesses uh, not only have the funds, but they don't have to go spend a lot of time trying to find consultants that can provide the service. So uh, just sort of the implementation steps uh, here. Uh, we published an RFQ uh, back in March of this year. And the purpose there was because we wanted to make sure because we know the businesses, of course, they like grant programs. Uh, but if we make it difficult for them to utilize uh, the benefits of the grant program uh, and to fill out the application and to submit the reimbursement forms and all of those things that are kind of the technical aspects of uh, getting approved for a grant and then getting reimbursed uh, the funds, uh, if those things are difficult, then we kind of lose a little bit of the goodwill. So uh, we wanted this program to just really be smooth and seamless uh, and not just uh, providing money to businesses, but also providing them help and assistance and just making it easy for them. So uh, we got good responses to the RFQ. Uh, we got a total of eight consultants uh, who, uh, for the most part, were all uh, local. Uh, of those eight, we selected seven. Uh, that was based on... Uh, talking to their referrals, uh, looking at their uh, prior work examples, uh, and also looking at their uh, online and website presence. Um, so now when uh, businesses get approved for the uh, grant, we then uh, share that list and contact information of those seven consultants. Uh, so once we had uh, the list of the consultants, the next step was to draft and then publish an actual grant application. Uh, and for this one, I wanna make sure that I thank uh, Juanita and also Danica. Uh, they actually rendered the application very, very well. Um, so the link that I provide to businesses, uh, once they click on that link, it's incredibly easy for them to go ahead and, and submit the grant application. You can really do it in about three or four minutes or less. Uh, and we still get all the information we need uh, to review the business for eligibility and completeness. Um, and in addition to the um, grant application, they also uh, helped render as well with a third party website or a third party uh, program on our website, uh, the reimbursement form as well. Uh, so once we had uh, the uh, list of the consultants and we had the application um, downloaded and, and ready to go and ready for businesses to uh, apply to, uh, we then had to make sure that businesses became aware of the grant program. So we did uh, a lot of in-person visits. Um, for the Perks program, uh, we hired ambassadors. Uh, they were temp workers who went out uh, and made a lot of contacts and developed a walking list of um, storefront businesses in the city. Um, I also went out, uh, especially for this uh, digital assistance grant program, and just visited with a lot of businesses, uh, tried to sign them up if they hadn't already for the Perks program, uh, whether they had or hadn't, also let them know uh, about the digital assistance grant program. So it was a real mix. Um, you know, I don't have the exact numbers, but a certain percentage of the businesses that applied did so because they got an in-person visit. Um, others responded to an email. 
uh, the chamber and State Pleasant Hill uh, also included information about the grant program and perks as well uh, in their email newsletters to their members. Uh, the uh, State Pleasant Hill actually offered to put flyers of the perks program uh, uh, in their uh, uh, Pleasant Hills at seven hotels right there at the front desk. Um, and then we flyer, Michelle, uh, your staff flyers for us for both of these programs uh, at a lot of the uh, Pleasant Hill Recreation Park special events. Um, also, we have a good um, list of shopping center property owners. So I contacted them. I don't know to what extent they shared the information with their tenants, but uh, we did everything we could to get to as many uh, business owners as possible. So uh, ultimately, we received uh, 48 applications. Uh, 40 of them were uh, deemed complete applications, and then the businesses themselves were deemed eligible for the program. Uh, the distribution uh, was pretty um, equal, 14 restaurants, 12 retail stores, and 14 personal care service businesses. Uh, full disclosure, there were eight um, applicants who were not approved. Uh, five of them uh, did not have a storefront, did not have a real uh, business that met the, uh, the criteria and the spirit of the program. Uh, two uh, were not from one of the three eligible categories. So they were not a restaurant, not a retail store, and not a personal care service. Um, one business doesn't have a business license, but if they did get their business license and I'm in contact with them as is uh, planning, uh, then they would become eligible at that point. Um, and then another one was not eligible because they were home-based. Uh, they do not have a commercial storefront. And this shows the list of the 40 uh, businesses uh, that were all eligible, uh, divided into the three categories. If you, so the names that are in bold, that just means that they are also a perks participating business. So all of those businesses are um, uh, participating in both of the programs. And of these 40, if you may recall, the um, ED committee has already approved $75,000. So that's enough for 10 of those 40 businesses to be approved. So these were the first 10 that submitted their application. And so these were the 10 that have already been approved and have the list of the uh, seven consultants and should be working away at improving their websites and doing some social media work uh, already. So, you know, when we allocated the first $75,000 as phase one, we talked about, well, if we get more than 10 applicants, we'll be back here and looking at, uh, you know, whether we want to uh, expand that $75,000 in phase one to include more businesses that apply. So that'll be one of the decision points today. So moving on to Pleasant Hill Perks, um, of course, 1.0 was launched uh, last year, uh, ran for over about five months. Um, we then uh, paused it um, and then decided that we would, uh, because it was so popular and we were coming up on the moms, dads, and grads season, that we would launch a Perks 2.0. So we did that starting uh, in May, and that is still running now. So in uh, phase one, 50 businesses signed up. And I remember, Matt, you specifically asked, hey, have any uh, additional businesses signed up in, in uh, 2.0 here? So 13 additional businesses have signed up. So we now have a total of 63. Uh, the distribution is a little bit less even as compared to the technical assistance program, a little bit more skewed towards restaurants, uh, but still plenty of retailers, uh, uh, plenty of personal care businesses. And the full list of the 63 businesses and uh, the ability to purchase your card uh, is available at pleasanthillperks.org. So these are uh, all of the 63 Pleasant Hill Perks businesses uh, divided into the three eligible categories. So you can just kind of glance real quick. And uh, one of the things that we tried to do really early on was we knew that a lot of the downtown businesses would be excited, would want to participate. And then we also knew that there were a lot of businesses outside of downtown that are sort of really well connected with what's going on at City Hall. They would easily and quickly find out about the program. They, they get our emails. Uh, but in addition to those businesses, we wanted to, you know, help a lot of the businesses that hadn't yet participated uh, in the city program. So um, we, we try to kind of spread out across the city and get as many businesses involved as possible. And um, these specifically are the 13 businesses uh, that uh, became participants just in the 2.0. Um, so that 2.0 is not actually a new graphic. 
just, <laughs> just a cool font I found. I thought it looked nice there. Fun with fonts? Yeah. Okay. So some of the businesses actually are new, so they weren't around during 1.0. So batter nice in, um, uh, Paris Baguette, maybe a couple of others. They were store hyper wellness. And then some of the others were businesses that I had already talked to before, and they were right on the fence. So I kind of wanted to see if they were still interested. They still had another opportunity, and some of those signed up. Uh, these are just uh, happy photos uh, and also just kind of shows how the program works with regards to the table tent. So if someone walks into a business and they already have a perks card and they know how it works, then they can just use their card right there. Uh, but if they don't, they can actually scan the QR code on this table tent, buy a perks card right there on the spot, and then make their purchase right there. Um, so one of the uh, sort of benefits that people talk about with the perks program is the multiplier effect or the, the leveraging of the city's investment with the purchasing power of the customers. So the total uh, perks investment from the $500,000 in ARPA funds so far uh, has only been $116,000. But the total number of perks cards, which is 3,603, 3, equals a total of $255,000. And that's because in order to get the bonus card, the customer first needs to purchase with their own funds, uh, their own card. So we've essentially leveraged $116,000 into $255,000 in uh, spending power at our local businesses. Uh, although I need to say that the $255,000, that's the total cards that are out there. Um, so people have not yet spent 100% of every one of their gift cards. I just took a look at it uh, and it's at $199,000. So, so far of the 255,000 total purchase, uh, customers have essentially already spent 200,000 at uh, the 63 participating businesses. Um, one, I don't think I showed the committee this yet. This is just a very uh, detailed broken down uh, budget of the perks program. So the 50% bonus cards that the city has provided to the customers has accounted for about $83,000. The gift card fees, which is how the third party uh, company makes their money, uh, have equaled a little over $10,000. And then all of the business outreach and the marketing, including the perks ambassadors. And, and the perks ambassadors, that's kind of a long term benefit, not just the perks, because we now have a really good, thorough um, business outreach list that we can use for other programs going forward. Um, the art and wine and music festival uh, bags and sunscreen, uh, they have the perks logo on them. Uh, and then we occasionally will do uh, some social media uh, boosts as well. And I like to include uh, the Perks video production. Uh, Jeff and I did that. It cost uh, the city nothing. Uh, so it's actually a zero dollar cost, but it uh, is part of our outreach and marketing strategy. Um, and then below that, you see uh, the total amount of what the uh, consumers uh, spent on their Perks cards. So that brings us, this is actually the last slide here. Um, so this is our budget, uh, including all of the funds that have been um, spent or committed and yet to be spent on the programs up to today. And then uh, recommendations going forward based on the applications that we have in hand for the technical assistance grant program. Um, so we've already allocated the 75,000 there under spent committed. Uh, if we allocated another $232,500, that would cover the remaining 30 applications, uh, and then it would actually uh, be a little bit over that, so there'd be room for one more additional application uh, that were to come in after today. The PERCS program, uh, we're recommending adding $35,000 to that program, uh, especially because we have a, a lot of new businesses, those 13 that just signed up, or some of them very recently, just in the you know, past week or two have signed up. So we want to make sure that they get the full benefit of the program. Um, also, for some of the other businesses, it can take a while to kind of get a little bit of momentum. So we kind of want to keep the program going while we you know, have it up and running. Um, and so that is staff's recommendation. A, a couple points here. One is that the current balance on the YIFTI account is 31000 So by adding 35000 we will have a total of $66,000 that would be available for um, future perks cards purchases. In terms of, well, you know, how long would that last? So the burn rate, if you will, on uh, perks cards up to this point. So since we launched in early May, 
uh, we have spent about $26,000 uh, on the, the Perks gift cards. Spent is a relative term, but those are the bonus cards that have been purchased uh, by residents and consumers. So it's about $13,000 a month. So for you know $60,000, that would be about another five months uh, of continuing the PERC program. Um, the other point worth mentioning is that, so the total potential um, allocation for the technical assistance program is $307,500, right? So that's all the existing applications plus one more. However, it's unlikely that every single one of those 41 businesses are going to utilize the full $7,500 because they have to spend the money on eligible services and then get reimbursed by the city. So there may be a business that just, you know, they just want a new logo and maybe they just spend $1,000, right? Um, you know, or not, maybe almost all these businesses spend right up to the cap, but it's likely that there's gonna be some cushion there. Um, the other thing worth mentioning is that back uh, in late uh, 2021 or early 2022, we had also talked potentially about a downtown pedestrian signage project. Um, so the recommendation at this point from staff is to just really focus on these two programs. A couple of reasons for that. One is uh, the response from the downtown shopping center has been pretty lukewarm. Uh, they don't feel that it would be a huge benefit to their businesses. They're not outright opposing it for any particular reason, um, that they don't like the signs. They just don't feel that it's really gonna benefit their businesses and bring more people uh, into their businesses' uh, storefronts. The other reason is because the other two programs have proven to be successful and we do have all these applications. Uh, and that is gonna get us up to, if we wanted to go ahead and approve funding uh, for those applications, we would start pushing up against our uh, total allocation of $500,000. Um, in addition to the downtown shopping center, I did also reach out to uh, retail brokers and some of the shopping center property managers as well, because there was some talk about maybe doing some of that signage, not only in downtown, but also elsewhere throughout the city. And they really kind of said the same thing that Bestar told me, which is, you know, with Google Maps these days and the fact that we've already got our big monument signs up there, you know, we're not going to oppose it if the city wants to pay to, you know, put some uh, signs up in our shopping center, we won't necessarily oppose it, but we don't see a huge benefit to us. So uh, that's why the, uh, the focus on these two programs. So that's all I have. I'm interested to hear any Yeah, I hope that the committee me. members have any questions about the programs or the yeah. good response. That's good. Yes. I think that was more than we're anticipating on the so that's a good problem to have. Can you refresh me again on this, this signage program? I, I, that, was this before my day? Yeah, it, it was definitely before your day. Okay. It was when we were kind of um, tossing around all sorts of ideas for what we could do with the $500,000. Okay. When it was initially uh, approved by a resolution by the city council, mm -hmm. it didn't have any specific program attached to it. Okay. So we, we mm -hmm. talked about ways we could spend money. Okay. Right. Um, as far as uh, the perks program goes, um, are you? What are some? Do you have plans in terms of, of promoting this uh, any differently? Perhaps like video or anything like that. I just, I was just curious if there's any. I mean, video, video, and social media engages people far greater than just a post, mm -hmm. right? Or I think greater than just putting something in a newsletter. Is there any, have you guys given any thought to that and get use, leveraging video to get people involved in, in perks and make them aware of it? We, and it's a good idea. So like I said, Jeff and I, we did produce a video, but it was mostly, it was a, a photo montage with music in the background, right? So it wasn't like a, you know, a really professional video where you, you go out and you interview the business owners um, and then, you know, splice everything together in like a three or four minute video and then put that on Facebook and Instagram. It's certainly something we could do if, if, if the ED committee, you know, wanted staff to look at something like that. There, you know, there'd be a cost to it, but we could, you know, take well, it out of maybe instead of thirty-five thousand going into the first yeah, program. Yeah, I would like that. not suggest a four-minute video at all. I just think I'd suggest shorter videos. I, you know, maybe a series or something of shorter videos that, that show how the programs are used. Man, you know, some success stories or something like that, perhaps where people have le you know leveraged this and how it's helped their business uh, might be might be kind of good. Um, and you might get out of that. You might learn. I mean, 
I'm sure you obviously you probably know that all the ins and outs, but you know, maybe there's things that you didn't, you know, oh, I, with my business, it's not been good for this. I mean, sometimes when you look for success stories, you find, mm-hmm. not, I don't want to say failures, but you find sometimes uh, glitches in, in the, in how it's done. You don't include that in the video, but you still learn right. about that. Right. No, <laughs> definitely not the video. Definitely not the video. Um, but I, I just, I, I just think that there are, uh, so many people out there that still don't know about that. And I think the video is, is um, I mean, it could be as simple as getting Tim Flaherty out there saying, you know, Tim's never met a camera he doesn't like. But, um, <laughs> <laughs> but the record show. Um, and, and, you know, I'm Mayor Tim Flaherty. You know, don't forget, we have a great Pleasant Hill Kirk's program. I'm standing out here in front of, you know, you do it. Vice Mayor Rennell, make sure to do it. He's the, in the back of the answer. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> But I mean, I just think that that's one way. I think that, I think it would be a good idea to kind of get this thing continue, get, 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 you know, next level. Yeah. All right. Jerry, um, do you have a question? Yeah. Sink out loud here. Processing. No. <laughs> So is there only $35,000 left to put into it, or is this just with the recommendations at this time? Well, it's it's all that would be left if we fund all of the technical assistance applicants. Because if you look at the bottom, that gets us down to 500000 Now, if some of those applicants, as I said, don't use the full 7500 there could right. be money down the road, but we won't know that for at least four months from now, because that's how long the applicants have to submit their university report. I, I tend okay. Is there um, at the end of that program with the websites some sort of reporting as to how successful it was? What did it do for the businesses? How much more did they do in business to see if it just wasn't money that went out? So we have all the numbers in terms of how much total the perks cards equaled, and then we also know not the perks card the, the Website, tech grant. yeah, tech grant. Mm-hmm. As to what did the businesses do with it? Did they realize more sales? Was it successful in helping them, or was it just money we spent? Yeah, well, we would definitely. I like the idea of doing a uh, follow-up, wrap-up survey after yeah. uh, the program is over, um, and to find out from them. Well, first of all, you know, I'll have an idea of what they did with the money because I'll be seeing all of the reimbursement prices, right. right? But to find out a little bit more, to dig a little bit deeper. Okay, so now you enhanced your online ordering capacity yeah how much did your online ordering sales go up as a result of this yeah. um it, it it would be challenging to get a really thorough assessment of that from all of the 40 businesses um, but it's certainly something that we can think about it's always good when a program is over right to yeah. not only find out what went wrong but also try and assess to what extent it really helped but if you're going to identify which strategies work the best mm-hmm. and have the biggest economic impacts for possible use later on or telling companies, yeah, this is what we did as a pilot project. And even if we don't have the grants anymore, it's like, if you're looking to improve, this is what improved it because we tested. Mm-hmm. All right, so to Steve's point, are there, are you guys familiar with like small business grants that the city could be eligible for where they could leverage that fundage into extending this program as you something know, if, if we wanted to? There were quite a few grants available to businesses, to, to cities and counties during COVID. There aren't any statewide or federal grants at this point uh, that, that the city could apply for and then use those funds for a program like either yeah. one of these two that I'm aware of. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I, that's what I was getting at was if not, not a COVID-related one, but if just in general, if there was a small business grants or something like that. So we didn't put anything in the application that there has to be a recording of, of the, their gains? Not of their increase in sales, but they do have to show us how they spent all the money in order to get reimbursed. Um, that would, you know, if, if we were to require something like that of the businesses, for some of them, it may be very difficult and awkward, and they would just want to get the money in their hands to help them. But we can still ask um, after the program is over. If we don't have questions uh, from board and uh, committee members, I'll open it up to the public. And 
Thank you. You can check online. Do we have any hands raised or any callers waiting? Oh, I've got to stop my share here one second. Okay. Uh, it appears as if we still have no uh, okay. public comments. Just want to make sure there's opportunity for everybody. Okay. That will close public comment. Any direction? Uh, where do we want to go as a committee on this? Continue with, um, you know, the allocation to the grantees um, for all the people who have turned in an application. It's a little bit more of the budget than we anticipated initially, but we want to continue with the, the 7,500 grants for all the applicants that are eligible at this point. Um, what's, what's the sentiment? I, I think we should. Okay. Um, I'm glad we saw some money. Yeah. If we have the money to do it, let's help them out. It's a good problem to have. Mm -hmm. Any other uh, feedback or anything? If that money, if we allocate this and the money is not spent, what would we have, or does it be, it'll just be there and we can we could leverage it for other, we could throw it into perks or something like that, right? If, 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 if that money wasn't fully utilized? Exactly. We have until the end of 2024 to not only allocate, but also reallocate. Uh, okay. So this is a very flexible pool of money here. Yeah. Okay. And I think there's a potential too of the perks bonus cards. So whatever cash value is always there. So like if you want hundred dollars in perk cards, your hundred dollars you spend is always going to be there. But the fifty dollar, the fifty percent bonus, the fifty percent bonus is not always there. So that could expire, and those funds could go back into right. the ARPA funds that we have to distribute to. You know, if we want to look at more grantees or the, the sign program, kind of resonating that, resurrecting that idea, depending on the number of funds. I mean, obviously we want everybody to spend every dollar um, in the program, but obviously there's certain expirations and time for the bonus portion of it uh, that could potentially come back into the, the coffer there, so to speak. So, okay. Does that the direction you need for now from us to continue on with the grants and use that funding towards the applicants that we have? That sounds good to me. The only other piece of direction based on Zach's comment is does the committee want staff to maybe hold back on a small portion of 35,000 that was gonna go to the perks cards uh, to see about making a video and if some of those funds could instead be used for making a video. Depends on how much, I mean, obviously I wouldn't advocate for a $35,000 video, but oh, certainly, yeah. <laughs> a but small certain, of, yeah, but I mean, I've seen yeah. Uh, yeah. a small portion of that 35000 yeah. What about breaking the video down now into smaller coding segments? We certainly could. I just have a feeling that the video that Zach is talking about is probably at another level beyond the video that. Have you seen the video that we already did? I have. I just, it just, four minutes to me is just it's too long for social yeah. media. Yeah. yeah. But we could break that up. For yeah, sure. you could. I just think that, you know, if, you, if it's, if it's some, you know, something fresher, like it's back, yeah, you know, that indicates that we're in 2023 and that's back, I think it creates. I think we want to create a sense of urgency, right? So. Okay. What's the figure you think? Like 2,500? That's a number. Yeah, I don't, I mean, I'm not sure what you. I don't know what the production costs. Well, here's the, the seven consultants, right? They can provide the services to oh, the businesses. <laughs> this is right up their alley. So yeah. I can talk to them and find out what yeah, they Yeah, absolutely. Get. I mean, I can tell you what a video costs, but it's, you know, the videos I work on are productions and they're very expensive. But I would hold back 5,000. That's what I would hold back from what I have seen with right now. Yeah, I don't think five is, yeah, I don't think more than five, yeah. So up to five. Yeah, yeah. I, 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 mean, I, I mean, unless they come back and they if they come up with some great creative idea that mm -hmm. takes us over that, but I, I'd want to see what that, I mean, I think the committee would want to see what that, too. what that would entail. Would you want to potentially talk about the allocating of 5,000 to the downtown signage given the reform reception? There was no one up. There's no proposal to pump that or increase that. Would you want to? Would the committee want to entertain that, or is that not of interest? I don't know. That's. It sounds like that should have sailed. That five. <laughs> I mean, if it's lukewarm, I didn't, I didn't see it in the accounting yeah. part. I think it took it took it out. Yeah, oh, I think yeah. I got back from a while back. Yeah. Okay. yeah. So I'm new to this. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, well, you and me both. Huh? <laughs> yeah, I like, uh, looks like I got holding already. <laughs> Um, okay, so I think we have a general consensus um, up to 5,000 for mm -hmm. potential video protection. Um, 
and then recreating that video and we'll see how we can market that through yeah, social media platforms and uh, stuff like that to kind of give a little more kick. We only have another 30,000 something in there, so mm -hmm. you know, you want to take it too far, it'll dry up real quick. Um, but yeah, I think it's a good idea just to get the word out because you're always going to have those people that are going to be like, I never heard about this, and what? Well, you never told me. So we, we get that a lot, no matter what we're going to do. Mm -hmm. but I, I think making another swing out definitely will so, Yeah. Thank you for that presentation. All right, yeah, great. Thank you for the reaction. Perfect. And I know we kind of touch base on the next topic um, is the uh, Perks e gift card program 2.0. Did you have further presentation beyond what you already presented to us, or did you kind of morph it all into one presentation for us? I did a merging. You did the merge and tribal merge. Like, so right. felt merge. Okay. Well, in, a good well, merge. in a good way. <laughs> Very efficient. Thank you for your presentation. Appreciate you. Uh, that's great that so many businesses are responding and so much money is being put back in the community, which is the intention of So that's awesome. Okay. Uh, item four will update from our Pleasant Hill Chamber of Commerce. Yes, yeah. Oh, no. Just a little bit. Oh, we'll get you. You want to do it? No, no, you do the camera. So, since the last time we met, we were actually, uh, we've, we've completed the. Uh, uh, Rwind Music 2023. Uh, I think it was a really well, uh, well executed and successful event. We had a lot of people both days. Um, we had a new configuration this year that we've never had before, and I got a lot of positive feedback and comments from everybody, from bands to vendors to 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 the guests that were there. So the, the is that having the stage outside the movie theater? Was that the new arrangement? That was the new arrangement. Uh, and that was uh, birthed because the plaza where Jax is, that was supposed to be having construction. That's right. That's for right. a stage. Um, Remember seeing those plans? Yeah, the never happened uh, as of this point. Um, so we, we tried to pivot very quickly and figure out other alternatives. And uh, we are already looking forward to next year and um, hoping to keep uh, a similar footprint uh, and expanding some areas. Um, because the layout was so successful. And that's the one with police, traffic, um, security, everybody was very happy. Uh, so we are already looking forward to 2024. Um, we are getting ready to roll out this coming week, our golf tournament, which will be October 9th. Um, this year we'll be having it at the Ross Park Golf Course. So uh, for the last year we've had a Diamond Creek at North Concord. This year we moved it uh, to another course, a closed course, so this of course doesn't get to get played much by the public, so I'm hoping that will also help uh, our interest. Uh, we are ending our fiscal year uh, for the uh, chamber at the end of this week, and uh, wow, at the end of this week, I have no work to do this week. <laughs> um, but with that, we have a transition of our executive team, and so we have our current chair, uh, Derek Knapp, stepping down, becoming the immediate past chair, and Marcos Montes, uh, who was with Comcast, will be stepping up as our chair for next year. Uh, and sadly, we're losing one of our longtime members who is terming out, uh, Susan Hall from Republic Services. She has been on the board for ever. ever. <laughs> and so she now gets a break. So she will be stepping back. And um, I'm looking forward to this coming year. Um, and I'm sure it will be as successful, if not more than this year. Um, I also uh, am looking forward to, I look right at you, I'm glad you're here, which is very uh, The last uh, several meetings we've had of the Governmental Affairs Committee have been uh, a collaborative uh, initiative with the City of Concord's Chamber of Commerce. And yeah, it's a very good uh, program. We had Bart telling us yes. about their disaster. We had <laughs> the U.S. Chamber of Commerce telling us about the deficit uh, ceiling, and that was a, went down exactly the way they said it would. And they had a call this week in which they uh, commended the Congress because the uh, deficit ceiling deal that was done was good for business. And the chamber is very happy about the bipartisan way it was done, even though people don't like bipartisanship, it worked. So that, and then our last one was Cal Chamber and we did their job creators and job killers. They identify every year. And to give you a sense, in 2021, there were 19 job killers that were identified, of which two reached the uh, governor, one was passed. 
Last year, another 19 were identified to reach the governor. Both uh, were uh, one, yeah, both passed. And this year, there are about 16 that have been identified. And if the past is, uh, it'll probably be like one that gets all the way through. So just because there are bills, most of them don't get through. One that uh, and they identified is uh, increasing the minimum wage for healthcare workers to $25. And that will hurt healthcare costs for everybody. So that was one they identified. And they also identified a California constitutional amendment uh, on individual economic uh, disadvantage. It's supposed to help unions and uh, unionize. The problem is they overreached in which any individual can take action if they feel they've been economically disadvantaged. So if somebody were to say only union workers can be on this job, well, a non-union worker would can say they're individually economically disadvantaged and bring in action. But Anybody, you, um, for employers, nothing you can do. If you fired somebody, did anything, the person could say, I'm economically disadvantaged, and it'd be chaos. But what the uh, Cal Chamber is reaching out is saying to the uh, legislature, you've overreached. You've gone too far. This won't help. Matter of fact, this will hurt unions, not help them, and create ultimate chaos. So odds are that one won't pass. They identified like four job creators. Um, but nothing really uh, exciting uh, that I can re reach on that. So we are not meeting on, in July and August, and we already have our guest, special guest for September, Zach. It will be presenting economic development too, and we'll be meeting here at the small community room, and it'll just be our chamber, because sometimes we actually have to meet just for ourselves to talk about and then in, uh, we'll meet in October because of the elections, we don't meet in November, December, and we go back to a joint meeting in January where we, this is now our annual elected officials bring us up to date because if there's any elections, that's when everything hits the road is uh, the January time. And we have, we invite all elected officials, federal, county, state, local to come and update. And we think that by having the combined Concord, Pleasant Hill, we have greater leverage to have people come and speak to us because they're speaking to a larger group, a more um, widespread group, and it, it behooves the elected officials because it's I like a, a state senator, a dot, who has both Pleasant Hill and Concord, so it makes it even easier to reach us all. And then we, we're we now getting to the point where since we have the same programs every year, just update, like Cal Chamber every year, comes by, and I, I was very impressed that the U.S. Chamber, Cal Chamber did it by Zoom, it's from Sacramento, U.S. Chamber's representative came from Washington to be with us. So that's uh, what's happening with government affairs, and uh, another good year to look for. Absolutely. Also, our next uh, business mixer will be uh, at Rogers Ranch. Ro yeah. Rogers Ranch. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Rogers Ranch. Uh, it's it'll be July 13th and then um, lastly uh, one thing I want to say uh, to everybody uh, in terms of chamber updates is uh, this last year we officially got back up to our pre-pandemic numbers of true membership so we're in a good spot and we have uh, businesses calling every day to join the chamber at this point. They're calling questions, follow up, and they're calling back and forth. So we're in a really good spot and very happy right now with that. So we're doing we're doing good. Any community members have any questions for the chamber at this point? Council Member Chess. Thank you, Chair Bryn. Um, uh, as far as for the chamber planning, I mean your 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 um, fiscal year starts Next week, right? So, yeah. do you guys do you guys have like a uh, do you, do you do planning based off of that? Like, do you start your plan? Like, you're gonna like kind of say this is our our year long plan, or do you do that in January, even though your fiscal is is different? <sighs> it feels really kind of amorphic. Uh, we just kind of keep moving forward. Um, but you know, looking at the fiscal portion of it, you know, for the last two months, I've been working on the budgeting. Work forward mm -hmm. so we are looking at we're really kind of starting it from july 1st on um but you know 
at any given time in January, we're still looking about what are we going to do this year, mm -hmm. you know, and, and there's, there's touch points, you know, at this point in time, when we, we first took the, the helm in, in August, it was okay. We're already in the year. What are we doing? How do we get all of our mixers on the calendar right away? Well, we now have mixers scheduled through next year. Mm -hmm. So we, it's just kind of this calendar. We just kind of watch the calendar. But yes, July is kind of where we do. Yeah. Did we do a retreat last August or was it September? Uh, we did do the retreat in, in, in August. Okay. We did. So we, we did have a planning retreat yeah. last year. Don't know about this year. Yeah, probably not this year. We don't know. So if you're going to do like your our four our four main initiatives for this year, you you do you start that off in Jan, in July. You don't do that. Yeah. In January. No, it, it comes with the uh, with the fiscal. Okay. Right. All right. Sure. One question. Sure. Um, so you mentioned that your membership is back up to what it was pre-pandemic. Uh, how did art and wine and uh, music do in terms of revenue compared to pre-COVID? Are you back up there as well? You asked the million dollar question. I didn't that's know it was really that good. much. Yeah. Uh, yeah, that's a that's one. <laughs> yeah, no, we, we did do well. Um, our costs were up exponentially as, as everything is mm -hmm. post-COVID. Um, what we are trying to discern, and this comes from years and legacy of how our accounting was done based on accrual or based on just totals. Um, when I am not 100% sure looking at the documents that we have, if things were grossed and netted, um, because there was never any telltale sign of that happening. And so I'm not quite sure if our numbers were 100% authentic before. Um, but we do have a good baseline to start at now. Uh, good one. one thing uh, of interest is the district elections. Mm -hmm. Government Affairs Committee looked at it. The directors studied it. All maps, every map, no matter what map you look at, whether it's four or five, uh, has business. Every district has business in it. There is not a non-business district. So we feel, because our concern was making sure that the business community is represented in whatever the council's makeup will be. And since uh, no matter what comes out of this, there will be districts, that, there had yet to be a district identified that doesn't have a business component in it. In three of the districts, there's major business components. So in a majority of whatever this comes out, there will be three districts with a large business presence in it. And so we don't feel that there is any further um, involvement that we have or a comment to make since our members will be represented in whatever format comes out. So we did look at it and we've taken a, a position of uh, I don't even neutral because we, we are, I think that business community will be well served by whatever district you go. Close. There were no hands raised or any public comment. Still no hands raised. Okay, just trying to follow procedures. You're not getting in trouble. So. Um, all right, moving on to thank you, Michelle, for attending. I really appreciate you being here and looking forward um, to the Rec and Park. Yeah, so, um, so I'm here today to give the Rec and Park update. And so um, I'm going to provide some information. And what I'd like from the committee um, is, um, you know, what, uh, what would be helpful for you in your work as you considering economic development um, from Rec and Park. Like what information do you want to know um, so that I can uh, better prepare um, information for you uh, so that it can be useful. So, um, you know, I know we usually come and I talk about um, events. And so, um, so the first slide, Zach, you have the, the... Wow, no. So let me, so I'm getting a, a message that says... It's a, uh, it's a PowerPoint one, right? Yeah, yeah. It says product activation failed. Um, that's a new one. Low on it like candy and cartridge. Yeah. <laughs> can you, can, you, can you see the list of, of, uh, of things on that drive? I saw the cover page actually yeah. a second ago and then it went away. Um, it's this box over here. We'll just plot of the 
let me start the whole thing from the beginning because it was working the second time. Okay. And then I started talking. <laughs> That's good. Um, but yeah, so. This is why I also, I know you have people potentially watching online, so that's why I have that, but I also have the. Uh, oh, is that because it's a. Yeah, so you might not have PowerPoint on that, so. Oh, mine was on PowerPoint. Oh, oh Maybe okay. different versions of PowerPoint? No, I, I did that on 265. By the way, look at this. Microsoft, Something came up here. Hold on. Microsoft came in that. Before we change, will there be an opportunity to uh, oh. ask some questions about certain things like Bed Bath & Beyond? Yeah, we can uh, do that all. We'll let uh, Michelle run through her. There you yeah, go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Right. 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 It's more yeah. fun when you have to work. Right. Right. <laughs> All right. Okay. Um, so, uh, so normally I come and talk about events um, as we, uh, you know, all hope events are our driver um, of economics in uh, in the city. Um, so, in addition to um, to events, you know, we also uh, you know have uh, programs and buildings and things that um, that provide some economic benefit, but I'm going to focus on events today. I'm going to show you um, a tool that we're using um, to gather some information um, on the visitors that we have uh, either in our parks. Um, and I'm going to use uh, 2022 Blues and Brews just as a um, uh, just to show you what uh, what it is, what information we're starting to gather and using uh, that might be helpful. So, um, so uh, Blues and Brews uh, 2023 is coming up on July 14th and 15th. We're all keeping our fingers crossed that this cool weather we're having rolls into that weekend. Um, I think I mean, might be a little too optimistic, but let's hope. And so um, the tickets are on sale now. Um, we also have uh, the August 12th Sunset Cin Cinema. Uh, we appreciate uh, the city and a number of chamber, uh, chamber businesses that are uh, sponsors of that. Um, and so we had our last one, uh, we had our first one in June, and then we're coming up on August 12th. Um, and then September 16th is Tinkers and Beers. So those are our kind of big events coming up, just to kind of give you um, an idea of what's coming. Um, and uh, and so those are the big things coming up. Um, I want to talk a little bit about our 2022 Blues and Brews stats. And so, um, so we're using uh, we're using uh, an online um, uh, online company called Placer AI, and um, they uh, they gather um, uh, they gather cell phone data and track people so that's the easiest way to say it um, they have um, you know they, they they aggregate it so you don't can't get individual people or individual places but um, it is very interesting um, as to how much information you can have their um, their their big space is in um, uh, is in shopping centers right so that's where they started um, and they've since uh, branched out to municipalities and government entities um, to really kind of tell you who's coming uh, to your facilities. It's really hard for us to count how many people are using a trail or how many people are walking and coming into the park, right? So this is gives us an idea of what they're doing. And so, um, so you'll see in 2022, which was um, our big comeback, as we like to say, last year, um, in, uh, in, uh, on, on July 15th and 16th, since it is a two-day event, we had about um, uh, 5,600 uh, 5, uh, visitors during that time. Uh, and uh, visit frequency was one. So um, so what that tells us is that most people, it's a little over one, so most people came to either the 15th or the 16th. They didn't come to both things, right? They came to one or the other. And, um, and, but their average uh, time, the average time in which they attended the event um, was 135 minutes, right? So just over two hours they were there. So they're not there necessarily all day. Obviously, there are some people who were there all day, but the average is about 135 minutes. And so... Um, if you look at the next one, the visit trend, um, you know, we actually had more people on July 15th than we had on July 16th. Um, and, uh, you know, July, July 15th, huh? Really? Yeah. And so I think part of that is, um, you know, part of that is the other things. So it's an entire day. The other things going on in the park before the party also get 
folded into that, right? So, and on July 16th, the only thing happening is the event, right? You drink on yeah. Saturday yeah. because yeah. Sunday, yeah. Sunday, if you drink, you go to work on Monday. You get two days to. Oh, well, no, this is Friday and Saturday. So this oh, is, Friday, this is a Friday night. 16th, and so yeah. things like the pool and all yeah, that. Yeah, the pool, yeah. That would all be factored in. Yeah, on the Friday. Friday. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So okay. that all is factored in on Friday. So I think it's a little skewed. Um, okay. But uh, but that is, you know, kind gotcha. of. Um, there isn't enough of an attendance. So it's not like a 10,000 event. Um, there isn't enough of a tennis that I can just get 16 or just get 15 um, because then you can start picking out individual data. So you have to get a little bit larger. So that's why we did that. Um, and then the next, this is a visitor journey. It's no, it is absolutely no uh, shock to anybody that everyone came to Pleasant Hill Park the same way because it's the only way you can get there. Um, <laughs> you know, um, so, uh, so most of the people. Uh, you know, came down 680, um, and uh, you know, and then into uh, into the park. Um, you know, a few of them came from the Four Corners area or up from Alhambra. Um, you can see, so um, that's the number of visits. So um, it just kind of shows you routes and how people get to places. Um, and so, but it's no, you know, it's smack dab in the middle, and there's that's the only way to get there. Um, the next page is the heat map uh, that tells. Um, which I think I've shown this before, it tells where our visitors were from, right? So you can see that, at least in this event, the majority of our visitors really are residents and kind of in that core Martinez, um, you know, Martinez, Pleasant Hill, Concord, Mormon Creek area. Um, and then we have some hot spots a little further out. Um, so we are bringing visitors from outside of the area in. Um, so, uh, so that kind of tells you, you know, kind of where we're, where we're getting the most people. From, uh, visitors. And then uh, the next uh, the next slide tells you about um, exactly the next slide tells you about uh, you know just um, where people live that day. Okay, so this is and they and they tell that because you know your your phone is there overnight, and so um, they can tell where your home location is and where your work location is. And who lives here and who doesn't? And so um, so you can see. Um, that uh, about 1.5 thousand, uh, well, 1,500 people, 26 percent came from Pleasant Hill. Um, then the next highest is Martinez, and then Pittsburgh, Walnut Creek, um, going down the road. So, uh, so you can kind of um, kind of tell we have a few um, out in that Discovery Bay area, some in that Daniel Blackhawk area, um, but really our biggest are that Pleasant Hill Martinez. So it really is kind of a local event, right? So um, even though um, we do have some people that come. So that's not very based. That's not like the 95. No, no, it's it's literally the location of where your phone sleeps overnight. So, um, so yeah, it's really scary. Um, <laughs> I was gonna say airplane mode. Oh, I just see that. Oh my, oh my, it's yeah, air, airplane mode, yeah. And they get it from like all different applications that you use in location services. So, anyways, um, but uh, but then this this kind of tells you this is the uh, what what they call the trade area. So where people are coming from. Um, we had some people coming from 250 miles away, um, and I'm guessing those are visitors of you know, residents who probably came in. I know one of those families is Kendra's, so she was here. <laughs> and uh, but anyway, so as uh, so you can see that um, you know most of the people came in, in between that uh, one to 30 mile range, right? So you know, so they're, they're really local people um, with some in some of those outskirts. So um, so that kind of gives you an idea. And then the next I thought might be interesting. Um, so this is where people were before they came to the events and where they went after the events, Here we right? Go. So, yeah, so this is more tracking. So you'll see before the event, yeah, before the event they went to, they were in downtown Pleasant Hill as a you know general area or Jack's, they were at Walgreens. Uh, they went and got a massage apparently, uh, went pizza, uh, kinder. So some of them were picking up food and then coming in. So, um, so these are the top places um, that they, the, the prior, so um, they, there's a, actually a larger, but this is the top 10. And then you'll see when people left, they went to Colesville oh. Creamery, they went to In-N-Out Burger, they, you know, they, they went and got themselves, uh, you know, some food. They went to Michael's, um, some of them walked across the street, went home, two worlds. They went to In-N-Out, but they Yeah. And they could, went to could, yeah, Fairfield. So yeah, they came from Fairfield. Could. Could Michael's yeah. theoretically yeah. be that's where they were parking? Yeah, that yeah. could have been then. It could have been where they were park parking. Yeah, they yeah. could have parked over there. So that's I just yeah. thinking yeah. beer and crafts. So, yeah, I'm thinking probably not, but they could have been parking over there. You're correct. European yeah. Wax Center sort of surprises yeah. me. Yeah. Is where you go afterwards. Again, some of, that's yeah. where someone's parking. Yeah. Maybe they parked. They, 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 they parked. Yeah, they parked. <laughs> right. 
<laughs> but um, but if you look at the, I'm sorry, did you have a question? Just a quick one. Yeah. That, so this tracks phones. It's so okay. mm -hmm. I have a phone. So does my wife. We have yeah. two kids. Mm -hmm. So does this account for? Yeah, they, they have a they have a they have a factor for that. Yeah, they, they have an algorithm that does that and then factors in for the. Family, yeah. all of that. So this so, is just the top yeah. ten, right? Yeah, that's just the top ten. Because I mean, that doesn't yeah. even close at close to hundred percent. No, yeah, no, it's just the top ten. So yeah, and so there's you know there's more that are you know individually. So yeah, those right. are the top ten. So all right. Um, and then uh, and then just kind of give you an idea, um, you know, uh, as far as the ethnic makeup, um, as we all know, our you know city is becoming uh, more diverse. And so this is the ethnic makeup of, uh, of those in attendance um, over the two days, um, which is bears pretty well with what our ethnic makeup is here in uh -huh. uh, They know that from the cell phones, yeah? yeah. Oh, they do, I was just kidding. Yeah. No, they'll tell that from cell phones. Oh, yeah. That's oh, yeah, they tell. Yeah. Based on your apps. And yeah, based on lots of things. So information that you give them. And so yeah, they can profile you as well. So anyways, um, so yeah, so that is, uh, so that is good. And, you know, and it's interesting because if you look at, um, you know, if you look, we've gotten a lot more diverse. If you look at any of our events, um, as one person told me, if you just stand at the registration uh, registration for any of our events and check people in, you will see that our community has changed and the people come. It's absolutely true. And so, you know. Um, and and, so and your the quality of the events you're bringing in yeah. from other, other yes, cities. They are. And so, um, so then again, this is the length of stay. Um, you know, this we use, you know, here, I expect people to be there longer, right? Um, and so, but if you look at, you know, let's just say Pleasant Hill Park over maybe a six month period, you can kind of see where people are going afterwards, where they're coming before, um, and maybe how long they're staying, right? So if you're looking at one of our parks in the future. So, um, so this is an event where people stay for a while, you know, hopefully they're trying a whole bunch of years and they're going to stay for a while and, um, and or, you know, wait. And so then, um, as you can see, uh, this skewed really late. The, the event goes late. Um, it's a, an event that starts at 3 p.m. Um, on Saturday, and on Friday it starts at 5 p.m. and goes to 9. So, um, so you can tell the skew. Um, we have a few people, as you can see, 12, 1 o'clock. Those are probably um, our residents that live in the park <laughs> or walk through the park. Um, and so we have a couple of those as well. The park is closed, but we see people who are in the park. So. Um, so this make, this tracks and makes sense because the, the event on both Friday and Saturday are in the late afternoon. Or it's probably it's called so. Sheila. Huh? <laughs> probably <laughs> called. Could have been. Could have been. And so, and then this is um, this is a list that I also pulled out. Is just the favorite places of the people who were in attendance at the thing, so or at our event. So um, some of the places they visit a lot. So these are the favorite places that they they go to. They're down downtown Pleasant Hill a lot. Um, they go to the Miranda and the Pleasant Hill Plaza, um, and so these are all of the things that are the favorites. And so, uh, as we all know, um, Jackson's restaurant is a favorite of lots of people. So, um, but yeah, so that's just why. Why is that pulled out separate from downtown, Michelle? What um, I think, uh, I just think because it has so many people specifically. Okay. So, um, in uh, in their in their tracking, that that is so they. They geofence, well, they have geofences around individual businesses, but they also have them in the aggregate. And if you get enough people in one location, it'll show that to you. But if like downtown Pleasant Hill, they look at as a whole, yeah. if there's only a couple people in each of those businesses, they don't pull that out because you could identify people individually, which is, okay. uh, which is enough. So that's why I'm it. curious this year how Morgan Territory's numbers. Yeah, are yeah, it'll, it'll be interesting. Yeah, that'll that'll be interesting. So, roll right into Morgan uh, uh, or pregame. Yeah. Right. So, um, so in addition to you know kind of the this, I just wanted to show you some of um, some of the stats that um, that we have access to that our staff's starting to learn how to use, um, specifically in you know kind of uh, looking at sponsorships, um, talking to people about the events. Um, as well as our parks, um, and uh, so we've uh, we've identified all of our properties on here um, on this particular platform, so that we can uh, we can look at what those stats are, right? So I know how many people are coming to visit, and how many are outside of Pleasant Hill, and how many are inside of Pleasant Hill, um, and so um, so that is exciting. The other thing we're doing uh, this summer uh, is it's going to uh, start here in earnest um, next week, is we're uh, surveying uh, all of uh, our residents and anyone else, non-residents, who would like to take a survey um, at events about what their highest priorities are for, um, for the uh, facilities that we still need to fix. So, um, so specifically, 
things like the park at the library, schoolhouse, um, Winslow Center. Um, and so we're in the process of doing an education campaign as well as trying to identify what priorities people have. So, so not just so, fix, but fix just, and, and or build. And or build, yes, and or build. correct. Okay. Yeah. But what their highest priorities are. So right. yeah, okay. not, and not fixing most of these things, build things mostly. And so, okay. um, but we're, um, so, um, so we're gonna be at, uh, uh, from July 9th on, we'll be at all the Sunset Cinema, or I'm not all the Sunset uh, by the Lake concerts. Staff will be there, we'll be at the library, birthday celebration, um, we'll be at all of our events, um, as well as, uh, so we're gonna be handing those out. Um, we have some Stasi brochures, as well as um, QR codes, and then, We'll be mailing those out in August um, to a select group of highly likely voters. So um, those are the people that we'll be targeting them. Um, but yeah, so we're just uh, in that phase trying to understand um, what the highest priorities are for our community on some of those projects that we need additional funding for. So um, with that, I'll take any questions. And if anybody has any information that they'd like me to provide them in the future, please let me know. Yeah, It'll be very interesting to see how your priorities map pre-COVID and yeah. your master plan into mm -hmm. post-COVID now. Yes, it will be interesting. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Well, I could I could speculate how that'll go, but I'll just wait and see. <laughs> um, so I have a question. And and this has to do with blues and brews. Yeah. I, I guess. I mean I guess it could apply to other things, but um, you know, with, with the with this, you know, city economic development staff in the room, with the chamber in the room, uh, you know, what? How can we support this? I mean, what can we? You know, we it's in it's in obviously the city economic development. There's vested interest. You know, there's businesses. You know, what can we? What can we do? And I don't, maybe not in time for this event, but to support to support you your efforts in this this is an i think an important event i mean it really bridges you know both you know not only the district but the city and and really benefits both entities and so what can we what can we do uh, to talk to staff and yeah uh, we do get quite a bit of support and the city has provided us with um uh, with sponsorship dollars right. for that event as well as others um the chamber has graciously offered um you know volunteers and so now they're working with that, um, with the staff on that, um, you know, the volunteers are usually kind of the biggest thing that mm -hmm. we have, and so we usually tap council members and other people, rotary clubs and things like that, to mm -hmm. help us. Um, uh, but I mean, I think, um, I mean, I think we do feel like we get some good support, um, okay. but um, you know, more cash is always helpful. Yeah, yeah. I didn't, you know, in, in terms of like, you know, I don't know, tying tying an event to our hotels, you know, things like that. I, you know, I know there, there seems to be a kind of a, a potentially a natural play between people coming uh, and, and staying, you know, people come to a blues and bruise, they spend money, they drink, they stay, they can stay in our hotels and, and eat rest, stay at our restaurants, get up the next day and go get coffee. Yeah, we've talked that we've talked to, um, to the state club and Hill specifically about creating packages and um, you know, having those available, um, you know, and rates for that. So I know staff is working with Trisha on that. So, uh, so that's in the works. Yes, in the works. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, um, I mean, do you feel like you're getting traction on that? Uh, I believe so. I'm okay. going to have to check in with Jen, um, on that. Okay. Um, I know she was working with Trisha on that. Um, and you know, as a, as an opportunity for them to be involved, um, and per actually provide a service that we could then tell people, mm -hmm. uh, Hey, here's some, Know, good deals on uh, hotels, you know, and or here's a hotel and you know, ticket package. So I need to double check. Um, but I have a meeting tomorrow as well. So I can talk to you about that tomorrow. Does your chamber, this, are your, I mean, obviously, uh, you know, some of the bigger, you know, I think I look at Jack's and I'm like, okay, they need to advertise. They're, they're clearly getting tons of people. You know, I, I can see why they may or may not not want to advertise it. Does, does, does your membership have any interest? Are they, in the past and 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 being a sponsor or you know it, it, it just at least this event there always seems to be the same types of companies that are selling stuff and things like that and i just was wondering I, I, is that something that you guys have your membership has expressed an interest in participating in this year um for our music 
we actually had more of our members than last year actually participate with with wanting to be active and involved at the event itself. So yeah. I would tend to say yes. Yeah. I think that is the case. Cool. Um, what I just think right now, it's not a chamber problem. It's a general problem. We have an engagement issue. Uh-huh. Um, I think some people are having a hard time re-engaging post-COVID um, because I am seeing some of those numbers go down from before. Yeah. Yeah, and I also think, um, you know, that, you know, that we need to do a better job at, you know, this is one of the reasons why you're using these numbers, to educate people as to some of what the benefit is and yeah. to reach out intentionally to some businesses that might have some value in becoming a sponsor, becoming part of it without, you know, without us just, you know, kind of going, oh, you've always been a sponsor. And so, you know, those ones we know we're going to have. And so, um, you know, so we're trying to be a little more intentional about that too. Yeah, I was thinking uh, in terms of like diversifying your average yeah. base. Yes. Since, you know, we always, you always have these angels. We always have the same ones. Well, you have these angel like in, uh, yeah. people that you know that um, uh, wise uh, yeah, wise girl, but also um, realtors. Yeah, uh, yeah. There's a, a gentleman who uh, a State Farm insurance person that always seems to be a sponsor. You know, you have those same people all the time, which is great. And we were you know, they were very thankful for that. But I was just, I was just saying, trying to. Yeah, and that is diversify a, yeah. that and also publicize their business. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, and that and that is one of our goals. You yeah. Know? So um, just okay. so everyone knows, we uh, Shield Richard, a long time uh, special events coordinator, is going to be uh, retiring, and she's kind of riding off into the sunset um, at a part-time basis, but kind of it's a slow, it's a slow roll in retirement. Um, but we uh, we did hire a new special events coordinator. who will be starting uh, the tenth of July in Elizabeth, and so we're very excited to have her. And so. Um, at Blue Throughout Blues and Brews, you'll get to meet her and we'll um, have her around. So, and she's, uh, yeah, Jeremy, I uh, thank him for serving on the panel. Cool. Uh, Where's she from? Uh, she uh, is currently working for the Alameda County uh, Fair. So, uh, so yeah, it's, she's done big sponsorships nice. and things That's like it. that. So, okay. So, That's so, so, yeah, so she, yeah, so she is, uh, cool. yeah, so it's great. So, you know, so she's, she's done big events and you know, big sponsorships <laughs> yeah. and she's got some connections. So. That's a big event. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, so uh, so she'll be coming uh, coming to us, but the fair ends on the ninth, and she'll start with us. Yeah. So, so it looks like we got a bigger seven. part coming up. <laughs> <laughs> a bigger or another one. Really exciting. So, but we do appreciate all your support. Um, yeah. Everyone here, individual Likewise. businesses, and everything. We appreciate appreciate your support, and we look forward to mm-hmm. working with Ethan and Jeremy as we kind of move forward. Engage people after the exact menu. Quick yeah. check to see if anyone needs to comment online on this before we close the public comment section on that. Yes, there is uh, no one wishing to comment. No one is not. Okay, so I'm sure we're following all procedures. Um, Michelle, thank you for coming. Yeah. Your presentation, we definitely appreciate you. Uh, Mr. Lack had something he wanted to do. Yeah, I just do this, and maybe we have it on the agenda on uh, each one of these meetings. Sort of an update of what's the major businesses. What's happening with uh, Bed Bath and Beyond? What's happening with the old Orchard Supply? Uh, what are the big things that are coming, or what is leaving? What's happening? So, uh, well, one thing to know is that whenever there is a big update on yeah. either of those two spaces or any other big yeah. update around the city, I will definitely put it on the agenda. So, yeah. for example, at our last meeting, Bed Bath and Beyond was on the agenda. Yeah. Um, Nothing to report that is new or different from our last meeting that um, Bed Bath & Beyond uh, building is still uh, tied up in auction. So Vestar does not know yet if the remainder of the lease is going to be purchased in the auction. Apparently it takes a long time, right? It's a, it's a process that stretches out over many weeks. Uh, so it may be purchased by another retailer or it may not be. And then if it isn't, then Vestar would work to take over ownership of the building and then they can really start to look for uh, a new tenant. There are interested tenants. Uh, that building is a lot more attractive than the OSH building. So it could be that it is vacant for a lot less time and is quickly filled by another tenant even before the OSH space is. But they're still working to fill the OSH space as well. Okay. And, and there, there are no more vacancies, by the way, on Crescent Drive except for one little sliver next to Vitality Bowls, which was the um, uh, Paul Mitchell School. What's the lay on the hotel? Uh, was it uh, high? I mean, uh, <coughs> down by which was Black Angus. Is that still? I think 
You're on, Ethan. Yeah, so, <laughs> <laughs> Why is it built? Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Jump um, in the deep end. <laughs> yeah, we, uh, so we don't have any news to report of any pending uh, construction, but there, I can suffice to say there's movement. I'm actually trying to get a meeting together in the next week or so with the developer. Uh, there is still interest. They have told us and reached out to say they are definitely committed, um, but there's no uh, sense of pulling back or, or not coming to town. Um, and they are, we are in, we are in discussions, but there's nothing newsworthy at the moment to report out. Uh, so, oh, they are, still, we're still engaging them. But since we're all here, just, I know summertime and it sounds like we have maybe probably two more months ish or more of perks. Uh, do we want to look at like a September meeting, you know, take July and August off from all vacations. It doesn't sound like there's anything urgent economically coming up right now, but we can always move that as an emergency special meeting if we needed to. Um, but I was thinking... Uh, Chair Ren? Yes, sir. Make a suggestion? Yes, sir. If, we're going, if we are going to do some kind of video, yeah. I think it would behoove the committee to see that. I don't know if we need to meet, but I just, before you start setting dates, I just thought if we do, I think it might be kind of, I think it might be, I, I'd like to know where that's going prior to September. Yeah, that can easily. But I don't know if we need a meeting. That's what I'm I, I would be happy to set an ad hoc subcommittee. Um, so, Councilmember Shess, if you'd like to be on that, and if one other person wants to be part of that, we could do that with getting uh, getting into a, a quorum or. What do you think that's the background time will be on instead of video? I don't know since we kind of just talked about it today, but I can you know hop on the phone and start talking to consultants who can do it and yeah. get a timeline together and, and an estimate. Okay. Was that you, Jeff? Well, I'm gone for. Oh yeah, for a while. I'm okay. July, so that's why. Okay. Um, I guess I can do it with you. If that's not violating any sure. rules or anything. Um, I'll take them over. The rest of the committee is okay with that, unless you guys want to watch the videos or do that. And just, uh, I'll be gone the second half of September, so. Okay, so it's not the first half. And we'll share with the subcommittee uh, with the video stuff like that. That way we can meet and uh, ad hoc on that. Um, do you, is there a preference? I don't know what planning commission schedules. Um, I would, you're the second and fourth Tuesday? It's usually the second and fourth. Okay, each month. Um, so with Labor Day being for council meetings, it would probably be dark for Labor Day. And then we usually go the following Monday. So maybe third Tuesday, does that? Third Tuesday, I may not be here, but okay. that's the 19th. Yeah, night. I think I am here the 19th. You'll be here 19th? Yeah, that's okay. The, so maybe we'll just kind of throw a dart on the wall and shoot for 19. And if there's a, a major conflict or something, just let us know. Uh, 4 p.m. okay, kind of towards the end, later in the day. So got to work, got to work. Um, that works for people. Works for me here. Okay. And then trust that Zach, you'll communicate with one there. And about what we've discussed here on that. Mm -hmm. Appreciate it. Any other items for the good of the order? I'll let you guys go hit the food trucks and I appreciate your time and uh, or the guzzler. I don't know if the guzzler's out there. But... <laughs> I call the meeting intern. Thank you so much. Thank you. I think to me. Yeah. We're the second Tuesday.